So I want to make a quick video to show the basic installation of the uh, Boost by Smith plug and play max ECU uh, sport in this particular instance for the 2022 and newer Gen 3 Suzuki Hayabusa. So Andre was kind enough to let me borrow his bike for a little while to uh, develop the ECU, but anyhow, I'm just going to show, um, essentially, uh, this bike normally has an aftermarket subframe on it. I've got um, a stock one that Skip um, lent to me to show how everything fits. Um, so you can see we've got the stock ECU, I've got the battery out right now. Um, you can tell already that I've trimmed some things in here, like the tool kit. Um, there's a couple of things that I had to uh, knock the ridges off in order to um, be able to fit the ECU. So I'll go ahead and pop the stock ECU out. Okay, so now that that's out, there's something I want to point out real quickly here. On my ECU adapter box, you'll notice the big wide 48 pin connector um, is actually coming out the side and it's upside down. Um, in order to be able to fit everything that I wanted to, I had to do that. So this is this will plug into the factory wiring harness, so will this and this. And then this spare 34 pin connector has all of the spare inputs and outputs that are available that I wire into um, using the auxiliary harnesses that I, that I make, or you can add things on your own at a later point. So my apologies for a shaky camera, anything like that. Um, this isn't the easiest thing to do one-handed while taking a video. But essentially, it seems like the uh, the sport kind of fits best in the stock stuff, roughly in the middle here, and then the um, Bosch igniter, four-channel igniter, will kind of tuck right here. Now you will want to mount this to a heat sink. Uh, Rick's Custom Cycle eventually, I think, is going to start making those. And then, besides trimming this stuff, um, you're also going to notice that there's these raised lips meant for the stock ECU hold down. Well, my box is kind of large and with this connector coming out the side, you really need to be able to set it flat over in this area. So this will need to be cut off. Um, and obviously if you're doing a permanent install, you're gonna to wanna to take some plastic and epoxy it on there or um, block this off so that you can't get water intrusion. Um, same thing over here on, on this side. You don't want water splashing up in there if you street ride it a lot. All right, so this connector now I have turned upside down and I'm going to go ahead and plug that in and I probably can't really do that uh, one-handed. All right, so essentially I've got that plugged in and then the two connectors here, the 34-pin and 26-pin connectors going over to the right side of the bike or my left in the video here as we're looking from this direction. This is where the auxiliary harness will plug in where all your spare inputs and outputs are. Um, so don't have any Velcro on here, but a little Velcro would help kind of hold things flat and sort of in the right spot. Um, but we've also got this long harness, and this is for the uh, wideband O2 sensor, so you can do closed loop fuel control and logging and all that good stuff. Um, then we also have this relay, which is set up to kind of sit between the battery and the, and the ECU here. Uh, pretty straightforward, you've got a positive connection and a negative connection to the battery. And when the ECU power um, get, turns on with ignition and everything, it'll get you basically direct to the battery um, for a better voltage response for starting and stuff. Okay, from this point, um, I'll show the auxiliary harness. Now, the one I built for Andre for with a race um, probably has a little bit more in it than what we might be able to do with a sport, possibly. Um, but that's going to plug in here, sort of route it, you know, down through uh, the wires that would normally going under the tank. Can sort of do the same thing with the uh, the O2 sensor. I'm not going to do that at the moment, but I generally route the O2 sensor over in this area, over by the cam chain, or sticking slightly out of the the frame there. Uh, but you'll see I've got basically his sensor harness. Um, I've got the air box off, the tank off to make this easier to see. But um, quite a few of the harnesses are going this direction, so I've got a fuel pressure sensor just using a little piece of fuel line and a little inline adapter to the secondary fuel rail. Um, so kind of kind of plug and play from that standpoint. I've also added a, a remote oil pressure mounting kit. So I've removed the stock switch and installed this guy. And we've got a pressure sensor here. That's obviously plugged in. Um, this bike is wired for nitrous. Um, don't have all of that stuff on here at the moment, but nitrous pressure is here as well. So most of the wiring kind of comes and then goes this direction. Um, I should have also mentioned that the 
Generally speaking, the O2 sensor is going to plug in over here, and then the uh, harness for shifter input is also kind of running up this direction, coming over here. He's not going to be using the horn, uh, which is how I normally wire these. So the horn connector has been pulled off from its normal location and brought up to here. So you'll plug into uh, just the negative side of the of the horn, which is a um, black wire with blue tracer. Okay, we'll come around to this side here. Um, so he already had an air solenoid, an air ram. Um, basically, I've got that wired in now. So there's a small little harness that you come up over the ABS, uh, come down, and then be able to plug in your air solenoid for that to do air shift uh, slash auto shift. Then I've got another harness going up this direction uh, with a few different connectors up here. Um, so on this bike, um, we've got a nitrous enable toggle switch that we'll plug in here. There is a ride height um, laser that's gonna be mounted that we'll plug in right there. And then there's also a, a shift light. We're actually using it as a warning lamp um, for when nitrous is armed. It flashes a few times when you first uh, arm it or if you turn the key on and it's already armed. Okay, also worth noting, um, if you were to install a ethanol content sensor, which I can do with the Max Sport, um, essentially over can, uh, what I did was I made up I made up a small loop, kind of like plug and play here, that um, essentially you disconnect the main feed from the fuel tank, plug this in, uh, routes this to the sensor, you put this over kind of near like number four injector and everything, and then um, again all sort of plug and play stuff and then comes back and then this would plug into the stock feed, so this guy would plug back in um, right here. So it's pretty cramped underneath here, um, but you end up with a uh, you know, a loop with the ethanol content sensor kind of over in this uh, over in this region. Now, if ABS valve was removed or something, might be a little bit more room, but it's pretty busy underneath here without uh, without adding anything additional. Okay, so I went ahead and hooked up to the uh, the battery leads here. Uh, you can see where the relay the relay sort of sits there. So now that we've got those hooked up, I'll go ahead and turn the key on here. Um, the fuel pump and fuel tank is off, so normally you'd hear a fuel pump prime here, but we're not going to see that, obviously. Um, ABS light is still on like normal. Um, the ABS lamp won't go off until you, know, you drive a couple miles an hour for a second or two. Um, none of that is changed by the Max ECU stuff. At the moment, I've got the hill light on. I do have the um, the IMU sort of that's bolted to the back of the tank bracket is, is off as well. Setting modes is a little bit different than stock. Um, generally speaking, the ABC U1, U2, U1, U2, U3 doesn't do anything at the moment, though it could be used to uh, trigger different modes. So like if you wanted to have auto shift on and off or like a nitrous arm or something like that, that could actually be done with these guys because I can read this from the dash, um, but I'm not able to manipulate a bunch of other settings and save those as part of it. Um, but essentially, you want to do all of your mode changes um, by this main screen here, um, not the one that has a whole table view. So you're going to go here and, generally speaking, you can flip around to the different power modes. So for example, here's power mode 1. You can see I'm wide open throttle. If I go to power mode 3, obviously it's greatly, uh, it's greatly reduced. This is, all, this is all tunable. Traction control. Um, on off some of the modes I only have uh, the up button um, so it will go and then roll over um, so off up to five the down button isn't doing anything for this guy I've used up too many internal outputs to get to your other stuff hold the mode button and then so if you wanted to mess with um, quick shifter I go in there okay so now we're looking at uh, QS or quick shifter and we've got um, Got like five different modes in there, plus plus off as well. Um, you will notice that the check engine light is on. Um, that is because I am getting error messages from the Max ECU right now. There's a few different things that's upset with me about. Let's take a look and see what they are. Um, O2 sensor heating is is upset with me, um, and that's because I don't have that actually plugged in at the moment. So it's important. Uh, when you first go to do a first startup, if you have like fuel pressure, if you um, obviously would have O2, um, if those things aren't connected, that's going to cause some strange things to happen. Um, it's going to be trying to do compensation and things like that. So you want to make sure that 
those things either get turned off or that you physically have them um, plumbed in and wired in uh, when you first go to use it. Another important one would be to get your this plastic vacuum line that comes with the with the ECU. You want to get that plumbed into the map sensor right here um, because it is it is looking for that even like on an all motor bike um, the way that the map is set up so far it is looking for engine vacuum. Um, so if that wasn't there, that's going to cause the bike to run uh, rough. Essentially, it's going to think that you're not at idle. Uh, a few other things to mention: the stock map sensor that's bolted to the corner of the airbox. You can leave it plugged in, but it's physically not doing anything anymore. Again, this is your map sensor. Also, the barometric pressure sensor that's in the tail. This is also not doing anything anymore. The Max ECU Sport, when you first turn the key on, will get barometric pressure. So that else I was going to show, um, based upon the things that I'm doing over CAN inside the ECU adapter box, I'm able to free up a lot of the Max Sports uh, wired connections. So if you look, for example, we're using the two digital inputs. There's only two on a Sport. Uh, you need um, a race to get more digital inputs like that. But we've got front and rear wheel speed to be able to do traction control. And then for the analog inputs, um, essentially we've got four inputs that are sort of taken over and reserved for the e-throttle. And then we also have the starter input. And beyond that, you can see that there's four labeled spare. So we've got AIN one, two, seven, and eight, which is pretty impressive if you look at all the things that I'm bringing in over CAN. We've got quick shifter, the quick shifter load cell. Um, you know, this guy right here, that's coming in over CAN. We've got the gear position sensor also coming in over CAN. Um, side stand position, because that's ECU controlled on the Gen 3, that's coming in over CAN. Um, coolant and intake air temperature. Um, so I'm kind of repurposing some things there. So like the intake air temp and um, coolant inputs are being used for clutch and for air shifter input. Um, to do air shifter, you don't necessarily have to have an input. You could just use a solenoid and pull on this sensor. Um, but if you want to be able to have different kill times for a foot or air shift, which I think may be applicable for some folks, um, you would want to use an input for that. So essentially, that's kind of a quick, uh, a quick rundown of, of what my plug-and-play um, setup looks like and, and will do. Um, you know, worth, worth noting, the, the IMU... It, it's located on the back of the uh, the tank bracket. You know, this guy right here, we can get uh, longitude, latitude, and vertical accelerations, and then rates out of those as well for, uh, mainly for, you know, data logging purposes. Um, if you want to be able to do wheelie control, you really want to add a laser. So for this particular bike, putting a mad racing um, laser height, ride height sensor on there. So the LF mode on the stock dash uh, without a laser isn't going to do anything. If you add a laser, you'd be able to do some timing reduction, boost reduction, um, throttle limiting, those types of things you could do if you were to add that sensor. And as of right now, the, the EB or the engine braking, um, no plans at the moment to support that. A little nervous about having the throttle um, left open. Um, in a time where you're not fueling and things like that. Don't want any unintended consequences there. Now you do still have, in this view, you do still have throttle over on the left side. You have brake pressures over on the um, on each side over there, though this bike has some of the EBS stuff has been um, cut out of there, so that doesn't work. Uh, you do get the lean angle as well as the um, acceleration, deceleration. The IMU is sitting on the floor over there, so that's not active at the moment, but that stuff is still functional. Some other neat stuff that we have is the um, holding this button is a rolling anti rolling anti lag or rolling launch control for roll racers. So you get to whatever RPM you want to start the race at, hold this button, hold it wide open, and you'll basically stay at that same engine speed. And then when you're ready to party, let go of the button. Um, cruise control is still is still operational. Um, the launch mode, if you hold the start button down, is still operational as well. And then once you do that, once you're in that mode and have that displayed on the screen, you can use the up and down button to cycle through 
different launch RPMs. I've got it set from like 3,000 to 9,000 RPM. Each click of the button moves at 100 RPM increments. So you can actually do sort of a two-step on the fly adjustment. So again, thanks for watching. This has been the Boost by Smith Gen 3 Hayabusa Max ECU plug and play setup uh, over, overview walkthrough.